Although I'm only 17 years old, I have found that making art has allowed me to overcome a few of life's biggest burdens. Making art, something I've been doing since my childhood. What if drawing pictures can create self-identity? What if drawing pictures can create connection? Overcome gravity? I don't know. My first encounter with gravity was when I was a kid. I was very overweight. My weight made me feel slow, dumb, excluded. And when you're a fat kid, nobody wants to play soccer with you. Nobody, you know, looks at you and thinks you're pretty, you're overly conscious of your clothes, and seesaws are avoided entirely. Um, and in elementary school, when it seemed as though everyone had a niche, John was on a baseball team, Katie was a dancer, and Sophie did karate. I was struggling to distinguish myself. So I set out to make my niche in the classroom. I asked myself, what did I do best, better than anyone else? The answer lay in my sketchbook. I drew pictures. And being a kid who was obsessed with color coordination and even matching her outfit to the background of her read poster, I wanted to be the next class Picasso. Any insecurity I ever had about my weight from then on was balanced out by the praise I would receive on every project, poster, and bedazzled math assignment. Without realizing it, making art had become a crucial part of my self-identity. And it was important to me of how I visualized myself and my role in the classroom and in the world. My second encounter with gravity was a mental one. And unlike my childhood obesity, it was an invisible struggle. When I was 15, my father died unexpectedly. I received the news on a Friday afternoon, and I was back in school the following Monday. I took my finals a week later, and I told nobody. It was a hard reality to face. I had barely registered the shock before plunging into a deep hole of denial. And I, being an extremely independent person, was confused when I couldn't find an answer to this new secret burden in my life. I didn't know how to convey what I felt, much less how to begin having this kind of conversation. Do I write an email, an angry worded letter? Nothing in school had prepared me for this. In truth, putting my grief into words terrified me. So I did what I knew best. I drew a picture. I began by writing through every photo album we owned. My father was an amateur photographer, a hobby that resulted in the extensive cataloging of most of my childhood. It also resulted in very little photographic evidence of himself. These photos were the accumulation of my father's passion, the memories of our family. Flipping through these photographs, this in itself was the first step in my makeshift therapy. I found a few photographs that were of my father, of my parents, before they had their two kids. I drew these photographs, and then I painted them. Reliving memories through photographs was easy, healthy even. It was also incredibly private. Yet, without my direct input, my personal story, these paintings stayed paintings. The viewers saw what they wanted to see, what I allowed them to see. To others, these were portraits of my parents. To me, they were the beginning of letting go. My junior year, I embarked on a journey of self-reflection. My concentration focused on my family. And although my family is uniquely my own, there is some basic understanding, basic empathy, about the relationship between a mother and her daughter, a husband and wife, a sister and her brother. On its surface, my work would almost seem cute, you know? An awesome Mother's Day gift, as someone had put it. Sure, I could see that, but it remained my primary 
therapy, my way of healing. Words and confrontation had scared me. My work, however, required little verbal context. Making art, drawing, painting, creating, all of that was a crucial tool in dealing with my burden. In making art, you have the extreme ability to choose what you want to say. You, can sh you choose how much you want to show, and you can be as vague or as explicit as you see fit. To an artist, this was fascinating. But to a mourner, this was a, sol a solace. In drawing my pictures, I didn't have to talk to anyone. I didn't have to speak to anyone. I didn't have to even write an essay. I just made work. I avoided all the uncomfortable formalities, the conversations, and the vain sympathies that would have arisen if I had been vocal about my grief. I just made work, and it was up to the audience to interpret. My most significant piece is this, my father's timeline. There were a few photographs of my father, but even fewer of him and me in the same frame. Finding these 20-some photos, I placed them in chronological order, and within this makeshift timeline, I began to see echoes. My father kissing me on the cheek here, me reciprocating, five years later. I began with my father, a young man, with no children. I end with a self-portrait, a young woman with no father. A balance is established, a harmony between him and me. But I didn't achieve this balance by beginning with a public vocation of sadness. No, I began instead by drawing these images, my pictures. Making art, has allowed me to overcome gravity more than once in my life. It's allowed me to continue living my life with passion. So if you ever encounter self-doubt, a crisis of self-identity, find your solution in art. You have to visualize who you want to be, either through a portrait, a sculpture, a photograph, it doesn't matter. You have to see yourself first in your head. If you ever encounter grief, draw it out. You have to re reflect and think and process before creating an image. And so in turn, you are healing when you create your picture. Emotion is broad and it's universal, but sometimes words may not be the most fitting media. Sometimes words may not convey what you feel nor conciliate your pain. So if you want to speak without speaking, you want to share without oversharing, you want to mourn without crying, draw your picture. Thank you.